um, apologies for the uh, mix up with our Zoom links, um, but I'm glad to be um, getting together with Alana Reeves today for our virtual art talk for kids. Um, just a heads up, we have one more, which will be in two weeks with Iman Surakid Kosin. So I hope you can join us then. Um, and during these talks, since we can't get together in person at Strathmore, um, we are excited to talk to artists who we've worked with before or will be working with in the future. Um, so my name is Gabby and I uh, work at Strathmore with various artists and we put together things called exhibitions. And if you're unfamiliar with what an exhibition is, it's a show of art. Within the word exhibition is the word exhibit. And so when you exhibit something, you show something. So we're looking forward to, in, in I guess next year, in 2021, I'm sorry if you hear my cat meowing, um, we're gonna be having uh, Alana Reeves bring some of her artworks to the mansion at Strathmore for everyone to view. So Alana, um, could you unmute yourself and um, just introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do? Yes, hi everyone. Um, first off, I want to say thank you to Gabby and thank you to Strathmore for working with me. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity for this artist talk um, and for exhibiting in the future. Um, so yes, again, my name is Alana Reeves. Um, I'm a DC based artist. I was born in DC, um, have been living and working in DC and exhibiting around DC. Um, and my work primarily focuses on my own family um, and identity and has been working towards um, trying to uh, discuss with others their own identity and how that is built and made um, and how they have come to understand it and how that uh, influences how they interact with others. And I do this through several mediums. Um, I use archival photos. Um, and when I say archival, I'm talking more about physical photographs that uh, my parents have collected and collected and keep safe in albums. Um, I also use a lot of embroidery. So that's a lot of fiber works or sewing and painting, painting and drawing. Great. Um, and again, you will still hear my cat meowing in the background. She wants to talk about art too. Um, so, Alana, you have uh, mentioned that one of the things that you like to look at in your artwork and, um, you know, when we think about artwork, the stuff that we make at home, uh, there's usually a topic, um, you know, whether you're doing a self-portrait or a painting of a landscape, um, there's a topic there. And so you mentioned with your topic, um, you like to explore topics relating to family and identity. And for those at home who may not know, identity is who we are, what, how do we define ourselves. So for example, my name is Gabby, but that's not the only thing important about me. Um, I have um, family members from different places in the world. Um, that's part of who I am. Um, I have a cat, as you heard, that's part of who I am. There are certain things I like, certain things I don't like, certain things that I, ways that I think about the world. Um, and we're all different in, in that. And so um, when we hear that there's a, a topic in art called identity, it's thinking about all the ways in which a person is a person. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the artwork because you also mentioned Alana, um, some of your um, different mediums and mediums are the materials that you use to make. So we have some wonderful examples of what that looks like. So let's go ahead and um, take a look. One of the mediums you mentioned was embroidery, which is sewing and thread. And we can see that in this piece here. Um, so I'm gonna zoom in and you can see as we get closer, you can see the string, which is thread. So thread helps us sew together our clothes, for example, or blankets. Um, and here you're using it to make marks, these X's and diagonal lines on, um, on an image here of a person. So can you tell us about what, what it is that you are making here, what it is you'd like to say, um, and the materials you're using? Yes. Okay. So. Um... 
first, I think the most prominent uh, thing in this image would be that there is a person represented here. Um, and this person is my grandfather, uh, the father of my father. Um, and so this is a example of one of the archived images that I've used. Um, so this is a photograph that my father has kept safe. Um, it's framed, it's in our family home. Um, I made a copy of this photograph and then made another copy and was able to uh, print this image onto a piece of fabric. And that is how I'm able to use this string in here to make um, these X's and crosses. Um, and this in particular is embroidery floss. Um, this is something you might see maybe on your clothing, you have thread that's uh, sewn into different patterns like to make flowers um, as a way to like decorate a piece of clothing um, and things like that. Um, and so what I'm doing here is my grandfather, the person portrayed here is not someone that I knew very well in my life. Um, unfortunately, he passed away. Um, but in making this piece, I was able to interact with him, um, get to know him a bit better. Um, spending time with his image um, helped me think of questions to ask my father about this person. Um, and that has helped me kind of understand more about my father and how he raised me and helped me understand the world. And so another thing here, um, why I've used thread to make marks on his face. Um, I'm making these marks on his face because I'm thinking about different activities that you might be given, um, particularly as a child when you're younger, um, activities that you're given in order to create your own piece of art. Um, like you're typically given a guide on how to make art. Um, so again, I'm using embroidery floss, uh, which is used in cross stitch. And cross stitch is an activity where you're sewing and you're typically given a pattern to follow. So you're told how to make an image. Um, so you can think of this as similar to something like a coloring book, uh, where you're given an image and you're meant to uh, fill in portions of that drawing to create an image. Um, and that's something I find interesting because you're given a guide as to how to think or imagine something. Um, and I think that you can think of that as when your parents are kind of instructing you um, on how to understand the world or interact with people, they're giving you a guide um, to fulfill your identity and personality. Um, they're giving you a guide on how to interact with other people and understand other people. Um, so in the same way that, you know, you're, if you're given something, you're told to say thank you. Um, if you want something, you should ask for it and say please. That's kind of a guide for you. So, um, but at the same time, um, you can also break from those guides. Um, someone may tell you something that is different from that. So you may understand things a bit differently. Um, you may understand that you may have to interact with people differently and communicate with them differently. Um, so these markings here, I'm thinking about an activity where I may be given a guide, but I'm not following one here. Um, I'm essentially allowing myself to take what I've known to be true, what my parents have taught me. I was taught cross stitch, but I'm following my own pattern um, I'm making my own image with it. Yeah, that's great. I think it's, it's interesting to think about pattern too. So for, you know, those who know what patterns are, you know, or don't know what patterns are, it's the repetition of an image um, or the repetition of a shape. So we have lots of these X's. And when we think about guides, as you say, like when our parents say, you know, even like pick up your toys, um, over and over and over again, it's like practice and it becomes a part of you. So, you know, I think that you do a good job of showing how um, doing something over and over is something, it's like practice, it becomes a part of you and how you're doing that with an image of someone that you want to know a little bit more. Um, and I think that that's um, a really good way to think about um, getting to know your family. Uh, so we have another piece here. Um, so um, 
and I just want to make sure, Alana, can you see it on your end? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so this piece um, it relates again to um, being a kid. You talked about being a kid and having um, this activity of sewing, cross-stitching to do and practice with. Um, but there, this is about um, something that you played with, or you play with as a kid. So can you describe what it is that you made here? Yes. Um, so some of you may be familiar um, with this activity that we mentioned. Um, they're called sticker paper doll books. Um, and this piece is referencing that activity. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar, the sticker paper doll books, um, you might find them in bookstores. You can buy them online. They are these small booklets. It'll have a picture of a doll in it and they'll be accompanied by these stickers. And you can use the stickers to dress the doll. Um, you can give the doll an object to interact with. And so this piece is referencing that activity, but also questioning if that activity is an appropriate way to inform someone about their identity or other identities. Uh, so these books, um, when I played with them, and I think is still true today, um, a lot of these books were used as a way to um, introduce people to other cultures and other identities and other nationalities. Uh, so for instance, you might find a paper doll book that is meant to teach you about culture in Mexico or um, about cultures throughout Latin America, throughout Europe, throughout Asia, throughout the world. Um, but a lot of these books, um, you're really just interacting with the doll. You might not be told what the objects are or that they hold um, special significance to the people that they are trying to teach you about. Um, so this piece here, I made one um, called Little Jamaican American Girl, referencing my own background and my own identity. Um, I have family that is from Jamaica and from the Caribbean, so I identify as being Caribbean American. Um, and in this piece, I've created a little girl um, that has reminded me of myself throughout childhood. Um, you can see that on the right side, um, she's visible, she's waving, um, she's interacting with you. However, on the left, um, she's turned away, she is not ready to interact, um, she feels a little bit hesitant about interacting. Um, and then the middle panel, you'll see that there are some objects laid out. And those are objects that you would use to um, dress the dolls or give the doll an object. Um, and many of these objects are from Jamaican culture. So I have a few pieces of fruit um, that some may recognize if you're familiar with Caribbean fruit. Um, I have a hat or two hats actually. Um, there are a few different shirts um, and then a piece of salted fish. If you're familiar um, at all with Jamaican culture, you'll know that the national dish is ackee, which is a type of Caribbean fruit and salt fish. Um, so it's a sweet and savory dish. Um, so these objects I put on here uh, because they have significance in Jamaican culture. They discuss what Jamaican culture is today. Um, however, if you were to take them off of that middle panel and try and fit them to the doll, they don't quite fit. Um, and they don't quite fit because I wanted people who are interacting with them to understand that maybe some of these objects are stereotypes. So maybe it's an unwanted association um, that are being placed on these bodies. Um, so trying to think of an example, um, you can think of maybe someone has told you that because you look like one thing, you must like one certain thing, but that's not necessarily true. Um, it might be something kind of negative and you wanna tell them like, no, that's not true of me. Um, that's not true of my family. Um, and I think this piece is a, a way to discuss that with people. It's a way to say, it's a way to introduce people to um, aspects of a culture that feel true to you and you want to share and it's also a way to tell people that some stereotypes that they may carry about you aren't true and aren't fitting. And there needs to be a discussion about that. 
Yeah, for and I think for you know those at home who are perhaps interested in making their own art, um, there are ways that you can explore this too at home and take inspiration from Alana's work. So think about drawing yourself and think about different items that are really important to you. And then think about items that are not, not really important to you, but maybe someone thought that you might like them or um, you know, said, oh, like you, you must like eat, eating this food because you're maybe from this place or your family's from this place. Um, and, you know, try drawing out those items and start thinking about what, what is important to you. And Alana met, uh, Alana said something that's very, a word that's very important, uh, which is culture. So culture is all of the things that make up um, the identity, who, it, you know, who you are as a person. Um, culture is, can also be who, what makes an entire group of people, maybe a family. Um, so for example, you know, I'm, I'm part Puerto Rican and there are certain foods that I love to eat because they're, they're these Puerto Rican foods that my family has eaten for many, many years. Um, so I might draw some of those different foods. Um, but then there are other things about being Puerto Rican that, you know, people don't look at me and immediately think that. So as you said, there's some stereotypes. So that's what we would call an expectation. Someone thinks that you're going to look a certain way or act a certain way or like certain things um, that may not be true. So for example, people may not expect me to have blonde hair. Um, but um, there may be other things that they would expect of me, items for me to like that I wouldn't like. So maybe you can try drawing out all those things and then look at what's really important to you. Try cutting them out and then putting them on the drawing of yourself and then sharing with your family. What are the things that are important to me? What makes up my identity? All right. So you have some other pieces that you've done some sewing with, um, embroidery. So again, this is using um, embroidery floss, which is like a thread. Um, it's like a string and you attach it to a needle and you poke holes and run that string through those holes. So um, there's a couple pieces here. So what made you decide to put um, this embroidery floss, the string, onto these photographs? So um, these two pieces, uh, the first one you uh, showed had some trees um, and I kind of sewed um, an outline of a different type of tree. Um, so these trees here are something that if you live in the United States, you might see um, if you're in like the Northeast region, like this reminds me of being out at an open park, these kinds of trees. Um, but the outline I have sewn on here are palm trees. So this is something you might see um, if you lived in the south of the United States or absolutely something you would see um, if you went to Jamaica, which is in the Caribbean. It's very tropical um, and there are many big palm trees there and plants that are really a little bit different than you might see here. Um, and what I'm doing with this image and the second image, which is a horse, but I have sewn an outline of a goat. Again, something if you were to drive through the countryside of Jamaica, you would see many more goats than you would see horses or like cows, which you might see if you're driving through the country in, here. Um, so both of these images are what I would refer to as studies. Um, so what would I say that I'm working with the study, I'm essentially practicing um, using these materials to convey an idea. And I'm seeing if they work. I'm seeing if when I use this thread and poke holes in it and make different shapes on an image, I'm sharing it with people to see if it conveys the same idea that I'm thinking. Um, so these are studies where I'm taking, I'm also taking, uh, the images here are what I would call found images. So I didn't take these pictures on my phone or with a camera and printed them out. I actually uh, found them at a store and I purchased them. 
Um, so they don't belong to me. I'm not sure where they're from. So I found them. They're, they're referred to as found images. Um, so I'm taking that, I'm sewing them. And this is an exercise in association. Um, so when we're talking about association, um, again, it's, I see a picture of a horse, but in my mind, it immediately makes me associate or think of something else. And in that case, I see this horse and I think of a goat that I might see in the countryside. Um, so in this exercise of association, the idea that I'm thinking of here is um, the idea of wanting to be somewhere else than where you are currently. Um, so, and I think many people who um, maybe come from a different nationality. So maybe when you're talking about your identity, again, like I would say that I am Caribbean American, perhaps you associate um, from being from another country and then American, or perhaps um, you associate from being not as not being an American, you have a completely different nationality that is not tied to the United States. Um, so perhaps when you see objects or see images of other things, it actually makes you think of something else um, from your identity, from your culture, from your family. Um, so I'm just kind of playing around with that idea. So I think that could be another activity is kind of looking at images and seeing, you know, does it remind you of somewhere else that you've been, that you've traveled to or another place that you would call home? Absolutely. And you look at a little bit of that too in your prints. And so printmaking, um, for those who don't know, um, it's um, like if you think about printing something off of the printer when you are on the computer, there's a machine that puts um, ink, it puts different colors onto a piece of paper. Um, but this is something that you do with your hands or with different tools, not with um, this machine. So can you talk about, um, you know, we see, for example, we saw already a palm tree, we see a palm tree here. So I know that you're looking at some of that, that imagery of this other place that's not where you are currently, where you are living now, um, and incorporating that into your prints. So how, how do you do that? How do you make the, the different shapes for your prints? Uh, so the different shapes you're seeing here, um, are made because I've used what is called a stencil. Um, so you can think of a stencil, if you're not familiar with them, um, essentially you could take a piece of paper and cut out shapes. And then if you were to lay that piece of paper on top of another full sheet of paper, paint over it, lift up your stencil, then it would leave um, these kind of blank spots um, or filled in spots or something like that. Um, and yes, printmaking um, is a really interesting process. You can think of it um, in simple terms, like you said, um, as your printer. Um, these images here are made using a very large version of that that is made from metal um, and is essentially, um, these are called monoprints. And monoprints you can think of as a transfer process. So it is taking a painting from a piece of glass or a piece of plastic. You can paint onto glass or plastic. You run that through a large printing press, which is uses its weight to transfer that image onto a piece of paper. And you might ask why you wouldn't just paint directly on the paper. Um, and that is for several reasons. Um, but one of them for me is that it just creates all of these really beautiful, interesting textures. Um, you don't always get to control what those textures are. Um, so every time you make a print, it's a little bit of a surprise and it's usually very beautiful. <laughs> um, and so you can see in a few of these images um, where there are different lines and you see different objects coming out of these backgrounds and textures. That was a stencil that I used to create that, to create those images and line work. Great. 
Well, I think we are closing in on our 30 minutes, but I want to make sure that we also, um, uh, that I also ask you uh, a couple questions. So for example, I would love to know how can people um, see more of your artwork? Yes, um, so I do have a website um, and that is alana-reeves.com. So that's A-L-A-N-N-A-R-E-E-V-E-S.com. And I have many of my works there. I have printmaking, painting, drawings, um, and that also links to any social media I have on there. Great. And of course, um, you'll be at Strathmore coming up in begin the beginning of 2021. So um, we look forward to seeing your artwork there. And um, just again, thank you so much for joining us and um, taking the time out today to show us some of your artwork and we're excited to see more. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Great.